Hi, it's the Irish Gypsy here to deliver your September 2016 general readings. Thank you so much for all of you who continue to watch and listen and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for all the support and feedback and particularly the comments that you guys are so absolutely brilliant. Uh, I love reading how <clears throat> the readings play out for you predictably in your lives for those of you for whom they do of course because these are general readings and there's so many of you watching thank you for the comments that you post both on the YouTube videos themselves and the ones that you send via email <clears throat> your support is greatly appreciated thank you also to my regular clients for keeping me updated on how your lives continue to play out particularly with the readings and thank you to those of you who continue to reach out for one-on-one -on -one readings with me it is always an honor and always a pleasure as i always say and uh, you have my gratitude for the trust that you place in me to interpret and intuit the cards for you and if any of you are interested in a personal one-on-one -on -one reading, you can click on the little about button on my YouTube channel's homepage and that will give you a little more information and detail about myself, what I do, and my contact information. You can email me directly at maggie the number one mcguire at gmail.com. I would be delighted to do a reading with you. <coughs> Excuse me. So if you are interested, send me an email and we'll go from there. I do readings full time, so I'm able to get back to you quite quickly and schedule a reading within a fairly timely period of time. I'm always asked about turnaround time and it can be anywhere from three to four days uh, to a week and a half to two weeks, but almost always within a two week period. So if you're interested, send me an email and we will set something up for you. So this uh, reading is for Sagittarius for September 2016. If Sagittarius is your primary sun sign, make sure to check your rising and your moon sign as well. Uh, they may resonate a little more predictably for you than this one, or this one may do it for you. Or, <coughs> excuse me, if you're like me, you may find that each of your three signs, sun, moon, and rising, may play out for you predictably in different areas of your life. It really just depends on who you are and what's in your natal chart. And of course, the fact that these are general readings. So I am continuing to use uh, my beloved Gilded Tarot by artist Cyril Marchetti, whom I'm a big fan of. I also have his Gilded Reverie Normandy deck as well. Uh, and the artwork on that is, of course, quite extraordinary. So you may want to check that out. So moving right along, let's get into this. This reading is for Sagittarius for September 2016. Sagittarius, September 2016. Show me the energies for the fire sign of Sagittarius, September 2016. Sagittarius, September 2016. Show me the energies for the fire sign of Sagittarius, September 2016. What does the month of September 2016 hold for our Sagittarians? <coughs> okay. We begin with the Six of Swords, followed by Judgment. The Nine of Wands, followed by the Seven of Pentacles. The Ace of Pentacles, followed by the Six of Cups. And the Tower reversed, followed by the Moon. And from the bottom of the deck, your overall energy and crowning ooh, card. Well, you have two, it looks like. We have the Emperor and the Fool, total opposites. feel like I should keep them both in there. So you're going to have two crowning cards, uh, overall energy, Sagittarius. One is the Emperor and the other is the Fool, both major arcana. <coughs> you actually, including those, have one, two, three, four, five major arcana this month. Let me just take a look at this. Interesting reading. <coughs> feels like you're trying to make a decision, a rather significant decision about moving away from something which isn't working or is very chaotic and turbulent. Trying to figure out how to get through something, solve something, whether something's worth continuing doing. Wanting to have a new beginning and wanting to actually move some of you, relocate, get away from something though strongly I'm feeling. Get away from something from the past or something you've had with you for a long time. 
Some of it may be something quite catastrophic that happened to you in your past and you're just not sure how to get away from it. Kind of an energy of being pushed and pulled back and forth. Do I step out of my comfort zone and take a complete and total new risk? Uh, or do I stay with the tried and true structured discipline? That almost feels like it sums up your reading right there, just going through the cards. But of course, we're going to go through them one by one as we always do. So, <clears throat> I'm actually going to start with your crowning card, Sagittarius. We have two rather different energies for your crowning cards. Uh, the Emperor, which came out first, and the Fool, which flipped out uh, actually with him, but behind him. And I feel like it's meant that way, particularly looking at the cards, because I'm feeling this push and pull between two opposite energies, needed to make a decision between two very different paths. And your crowning cards really reflect that. So the first one is the Emperor. And the second one is the Fool, my favorite card in the tarot deck, love the Fool. The Emperor, this is a very structured energy. This can also represent a father, um, a father figure, a paternal figure, somebody who's in that position uh, in your life. And because we do have the Six of Cups in your reading too, which is a card of childhood, the past, reminiscence, nostalgia, the tower in reverse, meaning overcoming something. But I feel like that whatever it is, it happened from your past. It could be your long ago past or your childhood and it could have something to do with your father for some of you. It could be issues to do with your father or a paternal figure somehow. Uh, this could just represent the energy of the emperor which is very structured, very ordered, very disciplined, very cross your t's, dot your i's, being very thoughtful, methodical, detail oriented. Uh, which the emperor has to be because the emperor has an entire empire to run and it's a huge job. Every decision he makes affects untold numbers of people. So he has to be very thoughtful and very methodical, carefully consider um, the outcome of everything that he does and decides. So there's that energy for this month. <coughs> Excuse me. There is also the energy of the fool, which is a very different kind of energy. And again, I feel like this represents you needing to make a decision or wanting to make a decision, making a decision, wanting to make a decision, feeling compelled to choose between two paths which are very different from each other. There's the energy of the emperor, which for some of you is going to represent an actual person, maybe a father figure or a father of some kind. The other is the energy of the fool. This is new beginnings, brand new beginnings, kind of the beginning of the beginnings. Uh, the fool is here to tell us that while it is good to have a destination, to have goals, to work for those goals, to be disciplined, ordered, and structured, that the true joy and value and lessons in life are on the steps of the journey itself rather than being destination or goal oriented. Uh, it's kind of about the carpe diem, stop and smell the roses, enjoying the journey rather than being focused on the destination, which is where our joy and our true life lessons come from. The Fool is here to remind us of that. The Fool is also here to tell us that it is sometimes okay to step outside your comfort zone and take a bit of a risk. Now, of course, you can go the opposite negative end of the spectrum of the fool. We do want to make sure there's water in the pool before we jump into it, but the fool is here to say it's okay to take a risk. Start brand new beginnings to something completely different. Um, for some of you, this may be just completely walking out of your life. I mean, it you know, this story could split in a variety of different ways because it's a general reading. There's a lot of you watching with very different things going on in your lives. But that's the overall energy. It's kind of this path, that path, this energy, that energy, and they're very distinct from each other. So <clears throat> moving into the spread itself, we find ourselves at the beginning of September 2016, Sagittarius with the Six of Swords, followed by Judgment. The Six of Swords. Swords is governed by the element of water. Swords is a suit about what goes on up in our heads, our ideas, words, thoughts, um, how we look at things, how we see things, perspectives, um, outlook, belief systems. It's a very cerebral and intellectual mental suit. The Six of Swords is a card that represents the energy of moving from one 
place which has an energy to another place which has a different energy. The place you're leaving is maybe kind of challenging, tough, hard, turbulent, chaotic, painful, even stressful. And the place that you're moving to is more peaceful, serene, settled, stable, placid. This is the card that represents the energy of moving uh, from that turbulent, chaotic, troubled waters into smoother, serene, more peaceful waters. You're not quite there yet, but it's a card that represents moving into that or desperately wanting to move into that place. And it's attached to the, it's accompanied by the judgment card, which is another major arcana card. This is a pretty serious card. Uh, not to be scary, but it's just a serious card kind of going along with that emperor energy. This is a card that has an air of finality about it. It says, whatever decision you make in this, whatever choice you make, whatever actions you take, there's an air of finality about it, meaning that whatever you decide, whatever actions you take are going to be difficult, if not impossible, to come back from. So before you make any decisions, take any actions, make sure you weigh things out carefully. Make sure that if you're going after something or you choose a path that it's truly what you want and that you're prepared for the outcome and the whatever could happen and that you consider that carefully before you do it because you're not going to be able to come back from this. It's going to set the stage for something for quite a long time. There's also a strong moral theme to the judgment card as well too. So so whatever this is for you, proceed through it with the highest level of honor and integrity and, and honesty and trust that you can. It's a call to action as well. It does look like it's time to actually make a decision about something, take, uh, choose a path of something. And for a lot of you, it's moving away from a time period, a situation, a relationship that's just, it's no good for you anymore. It's either served its purpose or it's its its unhealthy for you, or it's just challenging, chaotic, stressful, anxiety producing, etc. It's about moving. Um, it's time to make a decision to choose how you're going to move away from that. For those of you, this is advice that you need to make a decision and choose to move away from this. Um, and for others of you, you are you are in the midst of trying to decide whether to do that and how to do that. But again, it's that judgment card cautions you to be careful about proceeding and make sure that you're not too spontaneous and impulsive and that you just don't go running off blindly without considering the consequences, which fits with the energy of one of your crowning cards being the emperor, because that's exactly what he would do before making a major and significant life change, which it feels like this is. So next to that, we have the Nine of Wands paired with the Seven of Pentacles. <clears throat> so the Nine of Wands. Wands is governed by the element of fire. Wands is a very fiery, action-oriented suit. Change, movement, action, power. The energy of the suit of wands is creating, manifesting, building. It's very forward-moving. Uh, the Nine of Wands is a card that represents um, needing to uh, re-strategize, reassess, uh, it's a card of withdrawal, but not retreat, um, to try and figure out one last hurdle, one last problem, one last obstacle or delay. Because it's a nine, it's not a ten. A ten would represent being at the end of something, the full achievement of the coming full circles. You've finished it. Uh, you're almost there, but not quite. It's, to, it's at the nine. It represents there's one last challenge, one last hurdle, one last delay, one last thing to overcome or get through. As is represented in this picture, you can see this man is sunk down on his knees. He's holding on to this wand. Behind him is a grouping of eight wands. This grouping of eight wands represents, for some of you, a delay in something, an obstacle, a challenge. It was kind of an unexpected challenge. You were just kind of going along on your path and boom, this thing comes up. You've withdrawn for a little bit. Maybe you're a little confused. You're trying to figure out why is it there? Is it something I've done? How do I get through it? Is there a way to get through it, over it, under it, around it? Should I choose a different path? It's a card of temporary withdrawal but not retreat. It's to think it out, look at it maybe from a different perspective assess, re-strategize, and then go back in because the whole underlying theme of this is to go back in. You're not quite done yet. This is one last, the nine represents one last thing that you need to do. And that you're considering doing that because that card is about reflection and assessment and re-strategizing. And it's accompanied by the seven of pentacles, which is about uh, uh, reflection and assessment as well. This is the Seven of Pentacles. Pentacles is governed by the element of Earth. So the energy of Pentacles is very earthy energy. It's solid, dependable, rooted, reliable, stable, um, 
well, it's tan. Well, I don't know. Sometimes not so stable, but it's tangible energy. It can it can refer to things that we can actually see, touch, and feel. Um, often things like money, finances, property, resources, job, career, etc. Tangible things in our day to day tangible ne uh, uh, world. It's harvest time on this picture. This woman has planted her seeds. The trees have grown. The fruit has ripened. It's ready to be picked. The ladder's there ready for her to climb. She has a basket to put her fruit in as symbolized by the pentacles. But she hasn't yet begun to pick because she's taking a look at the harvest. And she's asked, she's reflecting and assessing. That's what this card is about, reflection and assessment. She's asking herself, did I get what I expected to get? Was the yield worth it? Is it worth picking? Is it worth planting another harvest of this kind? Should I plant a different kind of harvest or should I do something completely different? It's a card of reflection and assessment based on the results of what you've done so far and trying to figure out how to proceed from here. It's a very similar energy to the card it's paired with, which is that nine of wands. And again, it comes right after that six of swords and judgment. It's, it feels like um, Sagittarius, you're ending August, going into September in this reflection assessment mode, taking a look at a particular something. Is this worth continuing? It feels like there's this strong compulsion or yearning to move out of the place that you're in or away from something that feels like it's just been very challenging uh, and exhausting for you. And I feel like for a lot of you, it's old. Um, it's something from your past and you're wanting to make a break, you're wanting to make a move. For some of you, this is going to represent an actual physical move or relocation because the next combination of cards were around the middle of September now, time being fluid of course. We have the Ace of Pentacles which I often refer to as the moving card paired with the Six of Cups, the card from the past, childhood, reminiscence, nostalgia, looking back. <clears throat> The Ace of Pentacles, um, again, we have that tangible earth energy. Ace is representing the ones, beginning, new paths, new beginnings, potential, promise. It's the unfolding of something uh, which holds a lot of promise because the Aces represent seeds. And when you look at a little tiny seed and you know what it's supposed to be, it has the potential to grow into something quite beautiful. But it is a seed. Aces represent seeds. And remember, seeds need to be planted watered, nurtured, pruned, taken care of so that they can grow to their full um, beautiful manifestation. Uh, so this represents new beginnings, promise and potential which could build into something quite beautiful but it's tangible. It's a tangible new beginning and I often see this card come up when people actually move, move to another apartment, another house, another part of the state, another state, another country, etc. Um, but it's a it's often a card I see about tangible new beginnings and moving and relocating is often part of that. Now it's attached to, it's accompanied by the Six of Cups. So Cups is governed by the element of water. Cups is a suit that's all about that watery fluid world of feelings, emotions, love, relationships, all different types of love and all different types of relationships, not just romantic and sexually based uh, relationships, but other kinds as well, family, work, etc. The Six of Cups is a card about childhood. It's a card about the past. It's a card about reminiscence and nostalgia. It can be sometimes a little bittersweet. Uh, this card can come up sometimes when you're really stressed out and you're just looking back at a time uh, where you felt like you things were you know more carefree and lighthearted. It can represent being a little naive looking at something through rose-colored glasses not quite reality based. It can also represent travel uh, travel back to see your parents travel back to see relatives, travel back to where you grew up, roots of origin, etc. But it is primarily a card of reminiscence and nostalgia, basically the past. There's the energy of the past around the Six of Cups. And paired with that Ace of Pentacles, some of you, this, this is where the story could split in a couple of pretty different ways. Some of you could be moving back home. Some of you, this could represent moving back to the place you grew up in, moving back to your childhood home or back to where you, you know, your, where you grew up, the town you grew up. For some of you, this could represent that the thing you want to move away from, that the thing you're considering getting out of or whether it's worth continuing is, is something to do with the past and how to break away from that past to have this new beginning. It's actually physically moving away from the past and how to do that. For some of you, this could be a physical relocation. For some of you, this could be a mental and emotional issue, which is longstanding and stems from the past or childhood and for a small portion of you it could represent this emperor, this paternal father figure, something to do with your father from the past. Um, 
again it feels like this I want to move away do I move away should I continue doing this should I not and if so how again that kind of push and pull energy which I feel somebody else had this month too Taurus I think Aries had kind of a back and forth energy too I mean your two crowning cards are again two different types of paths and two different types of advice too and both may be relevant too in different ways so <clears throat> at or towards the end of September 2016 Sagittarius we have a very interesting combination of major arcana cards we have the tower reversed which is probably the only way i like to see the tower even though in hindsight um the tower even in its upright position represents usually the destruction or removal from something in our lives that we usually at the time feel is negative or very painful and challenging but in retrospect is you know something that was just not meant to be part of our lives anymore but still the tower in the upright position is not a card we'd like to see very often so it is in the reverse position meaning uh, and overcoming it sometimes can mean a delay but I often feel it's an overcoming and a, and a moving away a letting go of something that happened that something that happened that was very difficult challenging painful or even catastrophic um, so you do have that energy of overcoming something and again I feel like whatever this was is not something happening right now although maybe for a small portion of you it could be of course there's tons of you watching so but I feel like for the majority of you this is something that happened in the past and for some of you it's the long ago past and it could be from childhood perhaps this is the month that you're actually really working through and, and overcoming and letting go of something that's been very long held something maybe quite difficult and traumatic that happened to you from the from the past from the long ago past even from the childhood even from childhood or perhaps even something connected to um, your home your family your father etc um, but you're it feels like this month you're overcoming it or you're making great strides in moving through and away from that kind of getting moving through it um, even though it still feels maybe kind of cloudy some of you the struggle may be too in this push and pull back and forth do I how do I break away from this do I break away from this is it worth trying to fix or continue if not how do I get out of it how do I have a new beginning uh, for some of you um, you're ending the month it still feels a little cloudy but you feel like you're still moving through and away from that for others of you uh, because that town reverse is paired with the moon card for others of you you know it can represent you know again just ending the month still wanting not really knowing and I feel like um, just like for Scorpio that this is going to continue to play out and be and have more of a resolution a positive resolution in the month of October because it feels like September is spent a lot of it is in reflection do I do this do I do this kind of considering and that's not a bad thing because when it comes to making significant life shifts and changes it is always best if at all possible to carefully weigh things out and really give it some time and um, it feels like that's pretty much what September's for you and you end the month kind of still in that energy how do I continue to overcome this move away from it because the path still seems kind of unclear um, maybe not altogether um, knowing what the answer is yet but still working on it still working through it wanting to have these new beginnings um, I mean, and it's just kind of figuring out the best way to do it really and it looks like at the end of September you're still kind of in that energy um, but you're moving through it you're working your way through it so it'll be interesting to hear how this actually plays out because um, there's a you know it could split really in a variety of different ways depending on uh, what's going on in your lives for those of you who are watching and I know you'll update me because you guys are great at doing that so that pretty much wraps it up for now Sagittarius I hope you've enjoyed this reading I hope it hasn't confused you too much I hope you found it useful at least in some small way um, thank you so very much for watching and again if any of you are interested in a personal one-on-one -on -one reading you can click on the little about button on my YouTube channel's homepage and that will give you some information in detail my contact information and email address which is Maggie the number one McGuire at gmail.com I would be delighted to work with you if you are interested so until I see you all in a couple of weeks for the September 2016 mid-month readings as always I wish you joy peace blessings and a happy life Thanks for watching Sagittarius and I will see you later. Bye.